Hey everybody, uh, today's a quick look at the 6900 XT, uh, tough. This is my first ASUS um, AIB variant for 6900 XT or 6800 XT. Uh, right out the box, I noticed that this tough is a little bit different. If you, I don't know if you can tell on cam or just in general, if you know these GPUs well, this is a lot larger than the tough series for NVIDIA. Okay, so looking at the cooler, we can see that it's a larger cooler, right? And, you know, the PCB is actually longer as well, right? It's about, I think the regular tough ends about here. Okay, the tough for the NVIDIA 30 series. And when we look at the fans, you'll notice that they are the axle style that comes with the Strix. And I can actually show you right now. This right here is a cooler from the 3090 tough. Okay, I have the card blocked, so that's why I have the spare cooler. All right, so look at the size difference. By the way, you can tell the 6900 XT is a lot larger, the tough version. And you can see the fans are different. They're, they are the style that was found on the 2080 Ti, okay? And, so, I mean, there is another aluminum part here that sits on the VRAM, but you can just look at it. Okay, so now, if you're looking at this cooler and you're thinking, hey, these heat pipe, this heat pipe layout inside here, and the heat pipes, the number of heat pipes here. And then you look at the fans and you go, this looks very familiar. Well, I'll tell you why. This is a Strix cooler, the 3090, okay? You'll notice the fans are exactly the same. You'll notice they're even the same size. And then you, when you come and look at the fins, okay, on the cooler itself, you'll notice it's actually pretty much the same size as the Tough. Okay, the Tough actually has a little bit more to it. So, good question is, why is it that the AMD 6900 XT and 6800 XT get such a beefy cooler, essentially one of these Strix coolers rebagged, like with a different cover, right? Just with a different piece of plastic layer to make it a tough. While the NVIDIA's 80, 90, uh, I don't know about the TI, but I'm assuming it's the same, get a much not as great cooler. Especially considering that the TDP of this card is only 300 watts, while the 90 TDP is, I think, 350 watts for the 3090 Tough. Right now, you can argue AMD's GPUs run hotter, hotspot, etc. AMD's GPUs also have a hotspot. Okay, so it's not a one way street. Now, um, in terms of RGB, this part lights up. That's it, same as the top series for, you know, NVIDIA. But I'm going to now put this in a machine, just do a quick test. You can idea how quiet this thing is. This thing actually runs extremely quiet on stock clocks on 100% fan, I was messing with it. It was actually doing a pretty good job. Like I said in my previous video, it's kind of warm in my ambient, yet this thing was able to, I think keep the junction under 80 degrees and the die was like, 60s, something like that, and it swung up to about 2600, like 2550 stable. Okay, but this is not one of the higher wattage variants, all right? You can obviously mod it if you like, but yeah, I mean, the box inside the box, you don't get anything, just the card, and I think the velcro or something like that, nothing special, all right? So, let's take this, take a look at this in the system. So, yeah, if you do buy this card, keep in mind it is not the same size as the top for the 30 series, it is the same size as the Strix. Okay guys, so I have the Tough in the system right here. You can see it's a fairly long card. Um, this is a Fractal Meshify S2, which is the same size as an R6. Uh, I think similar to the new R7. So you have a basic idea of how large the card is. Um, it's pretty warm in this room right now. Uh, I have to set the room temperature. If I shoot it, you can see it's about 82 degrees, okay? So it's not 82 Fahrenheit, it's not too cool in here. And while my decibel meter isn't too accurate, um, you can see if I don't say anything. Right, we're about in the 40s. Even if I point it at the card. 
All right, so this is New York City, can't help it. So I'm gonna come in here to Radeon software and I'm gonna do what most of you guys would do at home. I'm gonna hit overclock GPU automatic. I'm not gonna do anything. I'm not gonna do anything manual. It says 2449. This is about average. Okay, I'm gonna hit overclock RAM. Some of you guys won't do that, but you know, uh, it's up to you. And normally this does cause a black screen for a little bit. And it's reading 2150, which is okay. So you can see right now the GPU is idling at 34, the junction's at 36. Okay, the junction would be the hotspot. All right. So I'm just going to run uh, 1080p extreme. This pretty much will load it 100%. It's much more um, load wise than the uh, 4K. All right. It's more stressful. Uh, I don't have the premium version of this bench on this machine, so we'll just go with the 1080p extreme. So we'll let that load. So uh, you can probably see the temperature on the screen. Um, if you can't see it carefully, let me see if I can zoom in on it more here. All right, so we'll focus on that. Okay, so we're looking at 52 on the core, 68 on the junction. Now, I'm going to point the decibel meter to it again, okay? I know the glare makes it a little hard to see from the top light, but you can see that you can't hear this card. It's pretty much the same as when I had it, you know, not running a load. Um, obviously, it's going to build heat up. Uh, it's still a, it's a 58 now, 77 on the junction. Like I said, once again, it's warm in this room. It's 82 degrees. So I don't know what that is Celsius left on my head. Sorry, guys. But it's a very quiet card. If you had the glass on, you know, somewhere where around from you, you probably wouldn't hear it at all. And this is with the just basic automatic overclock. To be honest, if you manually overclocked it, you probably would squeeze out a little bit more, but it's not really worth it. And you could undervolt it automatically and that would bring your temperatures down even more. But I normally I find one run of this will pretty much get your GPU as loud as it's going to be. I mean, it'd probably be a little louder after a prolonged, you know, prolonged gaming session. But yeah, it's extremely quiet. Uh, there's no wine on this particular model that I can tell. Uh, but then again, this isn't a scenario where you can create GPU wine, right? But yeah, so I'm moving that over a little bit, so I'll show you guys here. This little tough logo is all the RGB you're going to get. Okay, no other RGB, just that. But this definitely, because of the power efficiency of RDNA 2, um, no, it just doesn't get too hot. I'm at 66C and 85C on the junction. The junction can go up to like over like about 105 or something like that. Off the top of my head, I don't remember the exact uh, safe number per se. But yeah, I mean, I can hear a little bit more now. It's, the fans are definitely spinning up. I will bring my decibel meter to it again. So you can see we went up a few decibels, but you know, if you had the glass on, you probably wouldn't hear it. Especially if you have gaming with headphones or whatnot. So it's a 66C, 67, tends to stay there. Um, so yeah, overall, it's a great 6900 XT if you can get one. Um, I have the Liquid Devil Ultimate, and I can tell you that, you know, it's not much of a difference, right? I mean, this score can be higher. Um, this CPU is not overclocked. And the RAM on here is not that great. It's only 3200. Um, I have some faster sticks, but they don't play nice with this CPU. This 11700K I got uh, not only runs hot, it's not the best performing one. So yeah, that pretty much ends this video. Well, thank you for watching. And I just hope that maybe in the future, the 30 series for video will be updated with the newer tough cooler. That would be nice, right? So uh, yeah, that pretty much wraps it up. Stay safe, guys, and we'll see you next time. Well, I'll see you next time.